wash your face. This is what I do instead of that. But then I get up and I wash my teeth. <laughs> I promise. I promise I wash my face. Um, so I start with basic stabilization. It's just a simple knee raise. And what I'm doing here is making sure my back is completely flat on the ground and my abs are engaged. This is looks really easy, right? It doesn't look very hard. It's not very hard, but at 7 in the morning, it's pretty hard because you've just woken up from going to sleep. And then I do um, knee lean outs. And the important thing here is that you keep your other knee completely straight up and down because it's really easy to kind of let it flop. But if you control it using your abs and not using your hips, it completely changes the exercise. And then I do my favorite exercise of the morning, which is usually pretty hard because you're tired and you're sore, but I just stretch it out for one second. Oh, and release your hamstrings. And do it again. And then I do, go into my hundred. And this is a Pilates exercise. Some of you may have seen it before, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do a hundred of these. Oh. It's like, it's added difficulty on your abs because your legs are up at a 90, 90 degree. And then I extend my legs, and then I flex my pooches. I don't have pooches on usually in the morning. I don't sleep in my pooches, I promise. <laughs> and then I turn out and turn in. And then I cross my feet to get my inner thighs. And I'm still doing my arms, even though they may be a little less coordinated than they were before. And then I do some of these, which I think are mostly Pilates. And the abs, I, I actually do abs for like, I'd say 20 minutes of my day is spent doing abs because I like to keep my back really secure and stabilized. And I do a twist, but turned out, adding kind of that new degree of muscle tension, just turning out my legs. And then I just do. What are the names of these? Anybody? That's right. I do 10. And then I add a stretch to it, which I'm sure most of you haven't seen yet, where I do this. <laughs> it just make, gives a stretch in the middle of it, which is nice because hamstrings can get really tight. And then I just pull and pulse it which is a Pilates exercise I learned when I was 10, and I've done it every single day since. And I let go. And then I like to bike, so I bike up, and I bike down. <laughs> I go down. I do this five times, just to really get that teaser, whole abdomen engaged again. And then I do, in first position, this is a first position, I do circles. I know I'm still going. It's a, it's, a, it's a long routine. Then I go the other way. And then I just, I, I promise I'm almost done. And then I do some toe taps. Keeping my back completely flush against the ground, because if you're doing this, that's just terrible for your back anyway. So you're defeating the purpose of trying to make your back feel better. <laughs> throughout the day otherwise and this is just a different kind of muscle group to target by just by leaving your knees which I think is nice Unless you're doing a ballet bar, at least four ballet. So I stretch them out this way 
because my um, hip flexor get really, really tight in the front just from lifting my legs as often as I do because dancers are always extending our legs in all different directions. Um, yeah. So now I would move on to my bar. As dancers, we always start with our left hand on the bar. So if you're standing on this side of the bar in a class, you start facing the back and this side would face the front, but I'm going to face the front the whole time for you guys so you can see what's happening. Um, so these are the positions, and I'll go through these with you guys. This is first position where your heels are together, toes apart. It's like basic ballet. Learn this when you're five. You tendu to second. This is second position. This is fourth position. We skip third. Third is this. Third is this, this position. We skip it. And once you get older in ballet, because this is fourth, and then this is fifth. And fifth is just a more crossed version of third. This is sixth, which we don't really stand in, as I explained to you guys. Um, so we start with plies in any ballet class. Plie means to bend. It's kind of like the ritual that you start your day with. Um, most of your teachers don't even give you a combination. Most of the time they'll just say, okay, plies, and everyone does whatever they want. So I would start first position with my arms down, and I do it fine. Keeping my heels on the ground for as long as I can, releasing them for an extra stretch, and doing a grand plie, which is actually a really good stretch right now. And then I'd port a rock front to stretch out my hamstrings, roll through my back to come up, and then go up and back, and tendu to second. And now I'm in second position. And when I'm in second position, I like to live on the edge, so I actually don't hold onto the bar. I let go of the bar to kind of test where my balance is and get myself ready for the day. And if I can make it through this grand plie, I know I'm gonna be fine. So otherwise, it can be a little bit. You put a rut in. Away. And we taunt you to fourth position and fourth. It's important to have your heels right in front of your toes because when we're going to do other stuff in the center, you're going to see that this position is a much more pleasing one for the audience than any other one. Again, some theories of ballet have it that you keep your heels on the ground the whole plie, so you wouldn't go deeper than this. But Balanchine always thought it was more exciting if you went even deeper than they thought you could which is why I tend to lift my heels off the ground. And then in fifth position, you want this to be as flush as you possibly can have it. So straight, I'll give you guys a 360 degree view. It's as turned out as you can. And then when you're doing this plie, you still want to make sure your knees, if you look in the mirror, you still want to make sure your knees are going straight over your toes so that you're not, you're not sacrificing any bit of your turnout because that is just so bad for your joints. And then here I usually do a circle for cross. So I go all the way around, hitting every corner of the room, and I turn the front side to first, and this is the other balance test. And then usually I go into the other side, but I'm going to take plies on the other side today. I'm just going to do fourth and fifth because I didn't do them. Sorry, they were really fast. So even. what I do when I'm warming up and I don't have enough time before a rehearsal or a show. I just go speedy the whole way around. Okay, so now I would go back to first position. From that whole, those were just plies. Everyone's done with plies, they're relieved. You don't have to bend too much anymore. So we go back to first to kind of set, us, set ourselves up. And this is our arm in second. So when our arms are in second position, you want to make sure your elbows are lifted and your fingers are like draping. So if you had a drop of water on your shoulder, it would just roll off. It wouldn't stop. It wouldn't go off too fast. It would just kind of flow slowly down your arm. And a, we just do a basic tendu to warm ourselves up and start to point our feet. We go front, side, back, side. And then this is one of my favorites. I go side, down, side, full, side. I am going to do the other side because that felt really good. Um, so in these tendus, you're going to notice that my foot is crossing right in front, going direct to the side and going right behind my back in all of these. And on these demi points, I'm shifting my weight to test myself to make sure that I'm actually doing the right things. I shift my weight over a little bit over to that foot, and then right in between. So that's a tendu from first. 
that's usually what comes right after plies. It's like plies, John Dewey's in first. You can almost expect that. From this point on, it's kind of the teacher's choice. It's if they're like, oh, these people seem like they're really warm, they're ready to go. They can skip ahead to degages, they can skip ahead to something else. When I do my own warm up, when I'm my, doing my own class, I usually stay in first for a little bit, or I'll go right to fifth and start my time for fifth. So after first, it's first is really comfortable for most dancers because it's not as hard as fifth, and you get to like not relax, but you're not you're not it's not too hard. When you get to fifth, it's so much harder because your legs are right in front of each other, and you're trying to turn out, you're trying to engage all these muscles, but your legs kind of get in the way of each other most of the time because this is not not really a functional position to stand in because your legs are hitting against each other and you're trying to do all these things. So this is when the real work really begins for most of us. So I'm just gonna do a simple tondu in fifth position. Hopefully I don't do it that way. We're gonna go and halfway fifth, two tondus. Halfway fifth, two tondus. When I go halfway in, it's like another exercise for myself because what I'm doing is I'm pulling my toes back to what would be a fifth position without actually hitting it. So this is one of my favorite exercises, and the same thing to the side. You're pulling your foot in like you would for a tondu, but without actually closing the same thing to the back. You're pulling your heel, so it's the first thing that hits without actually doing a tondu. It's really good, it's really hard. It's one of the first things I learned as a dancer is that you need to do that exercise to be able to activate your turnout muscles in the center. So. While the bar is really fun and important, it's really the, the thing that's preparing you to dance in center. So if I didn't do that exercise right now and I didn't have the bar, when I went to do, when I went to close fifth from like a double in front, I wouldn't really know what to do with my foot. So because I did that exercise, I can pull my toes back and close into a fifth. It's like the theory on a ballet bar. It's our, it's our home base, but it's also what prepares us to dance, to do a variation, to do anything. Even if you're doing modern or hip hop or something different, you still need to have, we, we're doing a Justin Peck ballet and there's this whole crazy sequence and then we stop in this position and he's like, I need your arms here, I need your foot here, I need it turned out, I'll need all this. And we're like, but oh, we're just doing all this stuff turned in and crazy and weird. And he's like, well, you're still ballet dancers. You have to be able to hit a turned out position like that. So that's kind of what makes dancers and ballet dancers are different is that we have to be able to turn on the turnout kind of in a blink of an eye. And that's why it's important to do your bar every day. So from there, I would most likely move on to degage because my hips are feeling pretty warm. Um, degage is when we lift our tondu just slightly off the ground to a 45 degree. So I have this fun thing. Um, my hips are really loose, so I never really know where my legs are. So 45 degrees would be there, but usually when I do degages, they end up about there, which is probably 50. That's just who I am, so we embrace it. <laughs> we go one, two, P, K, one, two, P, K, one, two, P, K, brush, brush, brush. Yeah, that's a little high, but one, two, P, K, Maybe I need to rethink how high my legs go. Um, but PK, what I just did is one of my favorite steps to do because it involves a lot of speed and a lot of precision. Um, like when you're young and you learn the step, your teachers tell you to imagine like the floor is hot and you don't really want to touch it, but you have to. You have to like, it's like when you're young and your parents are like, don't do that. And you're like, oh no, I have to do it. I have to try it because you said I can't do it. So it's like you're touching something hot and you react right away. So. Try to imagine that I'm going to do it on this side. So that's kind of have to react like that. Mm -hmm. And for a while when I did the step, <laughs> I before I was better trained and more of a, a better dancer, I would do PK and I do my whole body. So that's one of the other challenging things about being a dancer is that you want your legs to move really fast, but you don't want your body to react. Because if I was doing a ballet and you were watching me and I was doing this, you would be like, wow, she's working way too hard. And that's 
the crazy thing about ballet is it's all this hard work, but it looks so graceful and so effortless when it's done. So we did degages, we did tendus. We're gonna go on. Think about what I want to do now. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not really thinking. Um, we're gonna do fast run jumps, or no, we're gonna do one of my favorites. So this is something to warm up your feet and your ankles after you've started to really warm up the rest of your body. Um, and we're just gonna release the toes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 two, three, run to jump. Toes, toes. My heel is coming front every time. Toes, toes. Plie, plie, run to and I hear I always do a grand plie again, just to feel myself, and then I went to susu, and I'd suit new, and I'd go to the other side. Toes, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This toe exercise is really helpful when you're jumping, because if I wasn't pointing my toes when I jumped, my foot would look like that. Do you see how it's kind of just like a dead fish? At the end, it's like flopping a little bit. And when I point my toes, there's real energy. Sorry, interrupted by the combination. All the way to fifth and one more ground plie. When you're first doing plies at the bar, it feels like a chore. They're really deep knee. They're like some of my teachers used to call them deep knee bends, which is exactly what they mean. It's like a deep knee bend. Um, but once you're ha halfway through the bar, grand plie feels really good because it's not something you're doing all the time. And if we're doing these little plies and we're doing all this fast stuff, but we can just slow it down and kind of take a minute, it's actually really nice. I never <laughs> didn't think that for a long time, but now that I'm a professional dancer, when I get to like indulge in something, I love it. I love taking a minute to be a little slower. Um, so the next thing I would do is a rond de jam. This is my favorite combination of the bar. I, it's like my absolute favorite, probably because it feels so good. A round de jambe literally means in French, round of the leg. So it's bringing your leg around and we get to keep it on the floor for now, which is really nice because you get to warm up your hips that way. Um, and it's just a kind of slower combination of bar. It's relaxing, it's nice. I'm just gonna show you guys it because I'm not talking too much. And you get to dance a little bit at the bar, which is always nice. This is me doing a round de jambe. It goes to the front side. Back. Front side back, and now I will bring it on the floor, bring it to the back, and I do two, and I do a big kick, and I do two more, and I bring it front. This is when I start to actually lift my leg off the ground. This is when your hips are feeling a little warm from these round jumps, from all the tendus, from all the dégagés we've done, that you can actually start to lift your leg off, off the floor. And this kick is really actually nice and fun because you get to just kind of let it go. It's not too hard. And you bring it positive. Front, and this might be why I like round jumps so much because right after round jumps, we get to stretch and take a second and do our quarter bra and grab our foot, take a load off. This is especially in ballet class when you have a live pianist. The pianist is still playing music, so it's like, a musically accompanied stretch. And then I take it back. I come back to this tondu that we started at the beginning of bar with. I go back and I lift my leg up as I go. And I stretch out my arabesque. I bend my knee a couple times. I bring it up against my leg. I hold this for a second. Hopefully. I get the susu and this is a passe balance. Just to kind of find your weight figure out where you are, and then I bring it down and go to the other side, which I'm going to do facing you guys. Do you guys see why I like round jump so much? You can also say no. You can be like, this looks the same as plies to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fine. To me, it's I do this every day, so the fact that I do this every day gives me a huge advantage over you guys who don't see this done, who don't do this every day, to know exactly the differences between every step. The side's a little tighter today. I'm a, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can feel it. It's almost, it's almost relaxing. Especially this music is pretty good today. It's like therapeutic to me, at least, doing a ballet bar. 
I haven't done it in a couple days, so that's really nice. Which just sounds, I'd sound a little crazy, but that's okay. Oh. That's the, I think that's the noise I make in my head every time I go to do a stretch. It's like a, oh. I do the same thing on both sides because I want to try to be even. Because you don't like to have one side that's easier or harder than the other. And when I'm doing a performance, that's where I'd stop. I'd be done at that because that in and of itself, I'm starting to sweat and get warm. And that's kind of the sweet spot for a show where you want to get to. You don't want to do too much before you perform because then you're too tired and you don't want to be too tired for a show. Um, I'll do like two more combinations because I don't have to perform. And I don't have to put makeup on or go do anything else. So um, after that, I would do an adagio, and then I do a grand mama. So adagio, do you guys know what the word adagio means? What do you think of when you hear adagio? Anyone scream it out? What'd you say? Dodgy. Dodgy. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's a memory of thing to think of. Anybody have any idea what adagio would mean? Anybody study music? Okay, well, adagio in music means it's like a slower tempo. Um, so adagio, we did Rana Jamps already where I said you kind of get to slow it down, and adagio is where it's like taken all the way down to the ground, it's almost no movement, it's a lot of movement, but it's like very slow, you're supposed to just really embody the slow, slow tempo, and it's where you get to double pay your legs and lift them really high. So I'm just going to keep it really simple today, maybe double pay front, tell them do, and then quarter breath to the front. Up. And this tanu, we did this right away at the beginning of the bar. It's the same thing that we're doing here. We're going to do it to every single side. We're going to go side, we're going to tanu, and we're going to go into the bar, get a stretch like we did in plies. We did this in plies. And we're going to go back, and we're going to come into tanu, and go back. We're going to run a jam. I get one more chance to be in a susu. Let go. Susu. I don't really know if you guys want to see the back of my head today. You probably will later, though. Don't do what we're going to do. This head is much tighter. We go side. And don't do and over to the bar. Nice stretch. This is like Adagio's both pain, not pain, but it's strain on your legs. And then most teachers try to put a stretch in there, too, to kind of counterbalance it. And the last thing we do, to kind of loosen it all up, we just did a whole bar, just did a whole bar, um, is to kind of loosen everything up, to let it go, to take it easy, and we're just going to kick our legs a couple of times to the front, a couple of times to the side, just to release it from the back, and we're going to brush front and go to the other side. This is nice because it's just like releasing everything we just worked on. We did so much work trying to tighten everything up and make it good to know we can count on these muscles to take us through the day. And that's it. And that's a bar. Woo! Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Unity.